I decided that night when I was told and I found and I discovered this that sooner or later we're all going to go. I just choose later, not sooner. And that's what turned me around. Just that decision to stay longer at this party called life on planet Earth. And I have to say that the, what I've discovered within myself. Robin, how did you find carnivore? Well, Dave, it's a long journey, um, a very long journey for me. But I was out in the limb in relationship to what am I going to do to help my health. Um, back in July 2020, I came down with stage four non-small cell lung cancer. And the PET scan looked pretty bad, really did look bad. And so anyway, I trusted the, what was supported for me at the medical profession and I went for immunotherapy and immunotherapy lasted for about two years and then that stopped and it was like oh my god what am I going to do and through the immunotherapy I was able to be stable and did shrink the tumors to a moderate degree uh, but it was like being left out on the limb because the medical profession said well the funding's run out and it's only a two-year fund here in Australia um, there's a possibility of chemo and I never wanted to do chemo. It was almost like not really in my, my desire. And anyway, so quite a few months went past from late, late 2020 into late, uh, late 21 into 22. And suddenly I saw on YouTube, Dr. Sean Baker talking about the carnival diet. And I'm an, I'm an acupuncturist. I've been involved with natural therapies since um, 1980. So back then I was like 40 odd years in practice. And I was like, what? It had, I had a WTF moment and I said, how can you actually just eat pure carnival? No vegetables, no fruit, no all those things that, that you know, we were taught to believe were, were the correct was the correct diet and I, and I grew up in Australian Chinese diet um, third generation Chinese but you know in my home it was always rice I mean I ate rice breakfast lunch and dinner all my life I mean high in carbs now that I look back um, and so this Sean Baker kept coming up Dr Sean Baker and I attribute him to the man that actually thought, well, I admire him because he's really well built and he looks after himself and he speaks well. And for about two or three, I would say two or three months even, I just kept coming back to it and thinking to myself, maybe, maybe that's an alternative. Having said that, the rest of the guys showed up like um, Dr. Sean O'Meara, and visceral fat and I really love that concept because I've been working on visceral fat for a long long time and and then obviously Dr Anthony Chafee showed up in my in my feed and it then led to Professor Thomas Seafree and the metabolic approach to cancer and that's when the penny dropped for me it was like I was told by my integrated doctor that it's a DNA gone wild rogue and that you can never ever get on top of cancer a dna rogue cell so dna's causing cancer are invincible but you can fight the army back you can fight the army consistently which is what most science and medicine approaches it as whether it be chemo immunotherapy and all the different approaches and Thomas Siegfried, Professor Thomas Siegfried, who I just like, my God, that guy. And I watched all his videos and he said, no, it's a metabolic approach. Metabolic cancer is a metabolic. It's not, it's, there are some cancers that are DNA based, but not all the cancers. So I said to myself, and, and I have this very strong intuitive capacity and I believe that we're all psychic. I believe that we all have a unique life purpose I believe that, that that unique life purpose is, is to a great degree our vibration and what, what makes us unique as individuals and tapping into that life source, which is a very much a part of traditional Chinese medicine and, and, and classical acupuncture knowledge. 
um, that, you know, the answers are within. And so my brain struggled with the idea of carnival, but my gut and my heart kept opening up to this idea that very possibly take a chance on this whole concept of metabolic approach to cancer. And from that moment onwards, when I made that decision on the 18th of June, and I say that because my father's, who's passed away now, his birthday is on the 19th of June. So on the 18th of June, 2023, I said, that's it, I'm carnival. And so from that moment onwards, I've been carnival. It's coming up 10 months, 11 months now. Um, and I can tell you, I can honestly say the different stages that my body's gone through in that process. Now, backtracking a little bit, having said that, in that time, I fasted for 21 days, which was very instrumental in helping my body through autophagy turn on the cancer cells, which is exactly what Professor Thomas Siegfried said. He said, he said casually in a, in a podcast I watched that at day 14, your body turns on, it's got no more glucose, so it turns on its own tumours and starts devouring them. So at day 14, the, the, the life force that came over me and the joy that came over me that I'm finally getting on top of this thing called cancer or the, the condition called cancer. So day 14, day 21, I had all the energy on the sun, whether it be enthusiasm. I mean, one day I, I exercised three times in the, in the same day because I just had all this energy. It was like a major shift. And I honestly can say that that 21-day fast for me was the turning point and then going carnival. And then months later in August, 2023, my PET scan came back and the oncologist said to me, if she saw that PET scan today, she would only classify me as stage three. And in medicine, they don't go backwards. They said, we can do now do radiation on the two spots that were there and it's targeted radiation, which is exactly what Thomas Siegfried talks about. And um, so I proceeded, yes, let's do that. Let's, let's go for that last bit. And so I did 20 rounds of radiation therapy from in August, 2023, um, with zero side effects. Everybody talked about side effects of radiation and all this sort of thing but I had zero side effects. It was just like, okay, well, I got to get busy. And, and every day for, for four weeks during weekdays, I was going up to the hospital and having my radiation therapy. So then they proceeded to do a three month CT scan and then a six month PET scan again. And at this six month PET scan, they said the, de de the delineation between scar tissue which is collateral damage from radiation and cancer is indistinguishable and that the cancer had marked reduction so i'm now waiting in, a, in, in on early may to do a ct scan because they said we have to do a ct scan in early may which is only two months away from the time that again we'll find out now at this point in time i, I really believe that i'm I've got credit finally <laughs> and this this disease called non-small cell lung cancer. Now that's my journey in relationship to getting this far. Now because I always understood that we're psychic, we all have this sixth sense and every human being has it. It's just refined to a certain degree of what level that is. You know, I got a hunch to do this or I was just thinking about you and you rang me, you know. Um, those sort of things are our sixth sense in, in action. And in classical, classical acupuncture, they talk about the sixth element, which has a lot to do with that part. Now, that's, that's been plagiarised and taken out of all the texts, just like they changed the, the course of the, the true Bible. And like everything else, everything's been corrupted to the degree which, to try to keep the masses ignorant. And... and Effectively, I see carnival diet as an, another part of that 
that corruption or the con that that exists on on planet Earth. And so um, I never let any of the medical profession be my clairvoyant. It's like if they started to talk down that pathway, I'd just cut them off. I'd just say, you know, I would just make sure that they never got involved in that conversation with me. And so therefore then I had to take that step of self-empowerment. And, and really a lot of my work these days is to help the person understand that we are a soul with a physical body, not a physical body with a soul and that we have the unique power in our sole purpose to actually influence every facet of our life as long as we just trust there's a guiding force that guides all of us, whether that be the God force or, or spirit or angels. I mean, we can call it all different names, but to me it's all the same. It's always been the same ever since I was little. And my grandmother used to often talk about that greater force and my, my father did the same thing. So I grew up with a a family environment that trusted that this greater force was guiding all of us. In actual fact, that's how I became an acupuncturist. I never decided that I wanted to be an acupuncturist. It just sort of fell in my lap and it felt right. So I just, yeah, let's try that. And so, you know, I because of that self-empowerment, which I believe is a big part of the journey in why I got sick, and why I've actually turned that around. Now, I often say that we all have an exit plan subconsciously, and even Dr. Shahid Bhutar, who's an incredible man that unfortunately has passed away, he talked about the exit plan that every person that he's worked with, with that has cancer, has going on, and he has to work on that level first before, before we can truly help them. And he often talks about how he missed those points. It, they get clear on cancer and then a month later they die in a car accident or something like that. So, you know, understanding that that unique part of all of us is interplaying at any given time. And I have to be honest to say that three weeks before I turned 63, for a number of years, and I would say my late, 50s, early 60s, I was actually bored with the way my life was. I loved what I did, but there was a certain level of mechanical, mechanic lifestyle going on. You know, just go to work, do the hang, love people, care for them, and okay, what's next? You know, I wasn't sort of, I'm a, I'm a researcher. I love that, being on that edge of personal challenge. So to some degree, it's like I often joke with people that, where I was at was like being at a dinner party and having a really wonderful time and you've all done that or a party and then suddenly you get to this point in the party where it's time to go home. Have you ever had that feeling where, where it's like, okay, well, you know, time to go. And I was lingering in that feeling for such a long time that I had set up an exit plan and I was given the choice to, to stay or go. In transition because I don't really get into the concept that life ends as one level. I do believe in a greater force and I do believe in, personally, I do believe in reincarnation because I've had many life experiences that have supported that. So I decided that night when I was told and I found and I discovered this that sooner or later we're all going to go. I just choose later, not sooner. And that's what turned me around. Just that decision to stay longer at this party called life on planet Earth. And I have to say that the, what I've discovered within myself is that 95, 99.5% now, I do believe that we have the power within ourselves to heal ourselves. There was always an element of doubt right up until before I got sick because I never got sick. I never went to hospital. I never took medication. I was just just shy of 63 years of age and I didn't do medication at all because I never got sick. So that percentage, I would say, was about 5% doubt of that you can't heal your body because sometimes I'd go to clinic and I'd work and 
patients would be happy. And then I'd have one patient that would just wouldn't get better. And many times throughout my career, and this is my personality, I doubted what I was doing. I had this sort of sense of doubt. Am I just conning people, I used to think. Am I just conning them to getting better mentally or whatever it is, psychosomatic disease? It's a very strong possibility because I'd done all the study in that area. At the end of the day, they still loved me and they still came back. So I was happy with that. But there's that element of, did I do the right thing to get them better? And so that became a part of my life research. I mean, I started acupuncture when I was 21, which is in 1980, which back then I can see that I was an influencer, early adopter, an early influencer in the area of acupuncture, particularly in Australia. Um, my membership number is number 49 in the whole of Australia. So I always joke with my friends, I'm in the top 50, you know. Um, and a lot of those 49, unfortunately, have passed away because they were elder graduates back then. I was only a 21-year-old, you know, fresh out of school, wanting to try something and become an adult. And so to a great degree, I really can see the stepping stones of my whole life path and my whole life purpose has guided me through this process to actually find that reality inside of me that, yes, we can heal our own body. And yes, we have that capacity to come back from stage four non-small cell lung cancer. I mean, my cousin, who's a radiographer, said, he shook his head. He said, he saw my, my scans and he said, most people don't last months after what, where you were in July, 2023, uh, 2020. So, yeah, I've got 0.5% to go, and I, th I think they'll all, it might get down to 1% and then, or, or half a percent even further. And I'll, and I'll say, well, there's always this element of you know, keeping an eye on the ball in relationship to keeping my life in a much better, healthy place. I'll never get lazy on that. Now, I can honestly say, and, and the evaluation time for me is about 12 months carnival where I'll commit, but at 10 months, I'm pretty close to committing to that whole program um, now as a way of life based on everything that I've read and studied and, and watched and seen others gain so much more benefit. Um, so Carnival is honestly my maintenance level. It's, it's, it's where I'm maintaining my health now to live to, you know, 110, 120, where we're meant to be. You know, I change the yeah. course of the trajectory of my life basically. And that's mm. why I love Carnival because it's so simple and it's actually easy and it's actually a cheerful way of lifestyle. Um, and you can change possibly the, the trajectory of your health and your life um, to living a much healthier, much healthier and more vibrant life. In my case, I got more of my life purpose to continue in working with helping other people get there as well. I mean, it's become obvious that, you know, breast cancer patients and and prostate cancer patients are now showing up in the clinic um, because I'm here to support them. And I have that in my, in my repertoire now, you know? Yes. Well, so can I, can I just take you back to June 18? Just, uh, I just want to um, go through those two months. So in those two months, you started carnivore and you also did a 21 day fast. During that yes, time. I, the, the 21 day fast finished on April the 14th. And that was then preceded into April, May, June, this whole idea of becoming a carnival. And that was, and I was debating it. I mean, I, honestly, I never really spoke to anybody about it because I thought it was so ridiculous to just eat meat only. <laughs> I can laugh now. But, you know, yeah. back then, I, I dug into the videos and, uh, and, and Sean Baker and Sean O'Meara and Anthony Chafe have become my best friends, you know, based yeah. on the research that they, they had put into it and the energy they put into it and the energy they, they put out. Is that they just had that ring of truth to them, you know. You can tell when a person's, you know, telling fibs and you can tell they're coming from the sincerity of their heart. And, 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 you know, that was really what supported my whole idea that they could be good talkers and they could be, you know, they're selling products behind the scene or whatever.
but when I saw the sincerity and and the joy and their physical health themselves, it's like, well, you know, hello, you got to wake up to the idea that what they're talking about must have some sort of credibility. Um, and that's, they, they encourage the process for me personally. Yeah. I mean, I had so much resistance from family. It was ridiculous. The resistance was, you know, what are you doing that for? And I said, I didn't ask for your opinion. I just told you what I'm doing. Oh, you can't do that. You know, you're crazy. And, and I'm talking, you know, Asian background. So <laughs> they're, they're very, um, non forgiving sometimes in the way they speak. So, you know, I'm not, not many um, of my family are doing the same thing. They're, they're not, they're not. Even my daughter did it with me for a little while. And so she now has the tools, but she loves exercise. She loves going to the gym. She's, you know, 17 going on 18. And so carbs and all that are a big part of her training. Um, but she has the tools now. That's the most important part about this whole process. That she has this thing called the carnivore diet that her crazy father got involved in, you know? <laughs> so... Um, I, I kind of wear the crazy thing as a badge of honor these days. So I'm kind of, <laughs> you know, I kind of enjoy being the crazy person. <laughs> it's, um, well, I saw so, you talking about Japanese don't really like the way you spoke about how, the, oh, I can't do that. Oh, I can't do that. Well, I'm Chinese, guys, Australian born Chinese, third generation. So, you know, I changed. I don't eat rice anymore. I don't do any of that. You know, the beautiful Asian food. Mm, don't do any of it, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So so on that point, how are you eating day to day? And has that changed over the time you've been over the last ten months? Uh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the the, the fasting is eighteen six, which I actually got from Dr. Bird, who's a chiropractor in the States, and he talked about if you've got cancer Really, you should be intermittent fasting or time restricted fasting, eighteen six. So yeah, from you know seven, from usually about one o'clock to seven o'clock, I have two meals only. I don't do breakfast anymore. I still drink coffee because uh, genetically, I know I'm actually okay with coffee. I can have coffee and go to bed. It doesn't bother me at all. So I do enjoy that little treat um, with a little bit of milk. So not a lot, but just a little bit. So I just have uh, three strips of bacon. Right now I'm making hamburger beef patties and um, four eggs, sunny side up. And that's my lunch. So it's almost like a hamburger without all the other stuff in it, you know. Don't put any salt or any condiments on it at all. I've tried to do tomato sauce one day and it just made me sick. And so no more of that. And then in the evening, I have uh, a good piece of rump steak on my um, on my Sierra, 800 degree Sierra that I've got uh, that cooks it really quickly. And I have a little bit of fermented um, kimchi with it because Sean O'Meara did talk about that and does talk about that. And four boiled eggs. And it's all about the texture of the food to me. I was doing omelets before, but I lost interest in that and so i just keep changing around the texture um and, and um you know just get a little bit of different flavor it's all the same really it's just the texture when you when you eat it changes yeah but that's oh, it. very very that's nice it. <laughs> i know I, you in the early days i followed your your diet and i saw what what you ate and you only do it once a day. And I thought, okay, well, that's interesting. If he can do, how many eggs do you do a day? I mean, and between eight and ten, usually. Yeah, I do. I do four at a time, which is eight. Totally, it's like if you can do that many eggs, then it must be safe. That's in actual fact. I remember your you you talking about what you eat, and I said, well, it must be safe because he does it. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, and and I've been carnivore for you know. Um, how long would it be now? It's coming up on two years. But um, even before 
I did carnivore, because I've done keto and whatever in the past, one thing that laid over from that was I was always big into eating eggs. So even before I did carnivore, like for a good 10, 15 years, I've probably been eating, you know, four to six eggs every day. So there's yeah. just, yeah, I mean, yeah. it, the all the stuff they tell you about, you know, eating more than one egg a day is the same as smoking and all that. It's all rubbish. I got caught in that, I, and I was restricting myself. Um, you know, with eggs, you shouldn't eat too many eggs. So I got I got caught in that belief system back then. Um, I did enjoy eggs. I just restricted it. You know, I did things that you read about and you learn about and you're told about and so yeah no, i got i got conned uh, <laughs> you know into that process of life yeah absolutely and i had gained weight i i was i'm 75 average now kilograms and back then prior to even being diagnosed i was up to 90 kilos um so you know i had gained slowly that 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 excess weight that um you know and i knew i had visceral fat I, I i just didn't know how to get rid of it you know try and exercise that off is almost impossible um but to fast boy it goes really quickly you know every day you're losing a kilo of it and, and you've got all this energy at the same time so yeah um and now now being carnivore and effectively being in ketosis or autophagy fairly well every day you know the body fat doesn't get a chance to build up i mean the muscle, you know, it's coming back, um, and that takes longer. But that's that's okay. I'm not in a rush anymore. <laughs> I'm enjoying my life much, much more now. You know, now that I, it's become a lot simpler. In all honesty, and and getting the credit in relationship to um, to cancer, obviously, yeah. I mean, the the thing with cancer is you can never just say, okay, I'm cured, and that's it forever. It's it's always a possibility and, and that was been going on my whole life and this goes on with every every human being effectively in the west they're already developing forms of cancer and their body's dealing with it or it's not until you get a you know a situation or event happens that you get diagnosed then yeah it changes everything but nothing was it was always going on anyway underneath and so carnival and um a number of other things that I haven't talked about on my protocol are major facets of my now living process. You know, I'm not doing things that cause what I call the death process. You know, because if you if you if you do alcohol, you're actually stepping into the death process more. Or you know, yeah, I'm, I'm much less of a thrill seeker in every facet of my life now. You know, <laughs> so. So how does the day-to-day -day compare now to, say, I don't know, two years ago? Oh, wow, my gosh. Back in early uh, in the diagnosis, it was about September, October, a friend of mine on Facebook, and I do acknowledge her, said, have you heard about this thing called Spooky 2? And I went, again, I went, what are you talking about? Spooky too. It's such a weird name. And so I tried to look it up on, on you know, Google and it's spooky2.com. It's really, uh, all the information is there, but it was so out of my mind and understanding that I couldn't really get it. But it's all about quantum healing and frequency. And really, I've been doing acupuncture all my life. So I thought, well, there is an affinity there, but this is more science now meeting Eastern knowledge. You know, it's like Einstein and Buddha getting together and having a good old talk, having an interview and talking about, you know, the theory of relativity versus being and just the energy of, of, of higher self. And so I put it on the shelf and then I was talking to my friend in the United States who had throat cancer. And I said, Mike, and Mike's really well adverse in a lot of different areas. And I said, Mike, have you heard about this thing called Spooky 2? He said, oh yeah, I've got one of those Spooky 2 equipment. Um, it's for cancer and, and I've got the cancer protocol machines. Um, would you like 
to buy it off me because I'm no longer using it. I'm now going into a different facet of radiation. And I went, my God, there it is again. The universe is telling me my higher self spirit is guiding me into this thing called Spooky 2. So I said on the spot, yeah, Mike, I'll buy it off you. Send it to me. And then I did all the research and got all the equipment, the rest of the equipment from China, which is where it originated, by a gentleman that is actually from New Zealand that lives in China, John White. Brilliant person, brilliant, brilliant. And you will watch some of his interviews and you hear the ring of truth in his, in his words. And he, he created all this equipment based on a gentleman called Rife. And so it's the rifling equipment. And there's a lot of videos that a person can look up. Anyway, I bought all that equipment in the beginning. Yeah, the rifling protocol, he was a gentleman back in the early 1900s who actually cured cancer in some research in, uh, in the United States. Um, the not so good people got onto him and his laboratory mysteriously was caught on fire. And unfortunately, uh, um, he never was able to fulfill, you know, his main mission, which was rifing and frequency healing. Now, he's returned through his documents that he had had published. And, and, and there are people now on the planet that are actually following that same pathway of rifing. And Spooky 2 is a part of that program. Um, and you can buy the equipment and be proactive in using frequency healing to actually support any level of disease state. So that's a big part of my daily routine where I spend four hours approximately every day doing rifing or, or spooky too in the cancer area on my body. Um, and I've been doing that every day since uh, probably October, 2020. Um, and I don't, it's just a normal routine. I can put it on pause and, and go and do things and, and come back to it. And, and then I sit there with it on my chest and um, usually watch YouTube videos to tell you and do all my research in that time. So, I, you know, I find it a really pleasurable time of the day where I'm actually forced to do that and look after myself and then do all the research. And so that's how I've, I've learned to, you know, I've got all a, a huge file on different, different, um, YouTube videos that I've watched that I think are very important for others to look at, you know. And then having said that, in part of the early days, I saw this video out of the corner of my eye on YouTube and it was cancer versus urine therapy. And I went like, urine therapy? And urine therapy is art of Arctic medicine. It's also in Chinese medicine. You know, this is going back thousands of years and in actual fact, um, Every, every person that's ever been born was bathing and breathing amniotic fluid when we were in the womb, which is effectively urine. And so, you know, our early development came from the ingestion of urine. And so urine therapy is a big part of my daily program as well. Um, and, and you actually recycling stem cells and you're actually giving your body the tool to heal itself, which is exactly what um, stem cells do. It, and so it's all in urine. And, and, I, and I've got thousands of, I've got quite a few videos on that um, that have come out as secret cancer um, solutions that, have ne that, that, don't, that never get to mainstream, you know? Um, so yeah, spooky two, cancer, uh, urine therapy, uh, carnivore diet, exercise, and, and having a sense of purpose in life, I think, is the main ingredient that, that, that keeps me moving forward and, and, and having a great sense of joy and fulfilment every day of my life, you know. It's, I think that's really important in, in the overall process of, 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 of being joyful and living. Just not unlike when we were younger teenagers and, and, and experiencing the adventure of life. I see every day as an adventure of, and, and that's how I look at it. Um, whether it be a new patient or whether it be a patient I've seen for a long, long time or even just our interview today, this is just like, this is my highlight. You know, today's my highlight and there's only one moment and that is right now. The future will work itself out and the past is gone. You know, so I live a, a fairly good discipline from that point of view of being much more in touch with present moment living. 
Um, that's a no, another important ingredient, you know. Um, mm. Fear is far too much portrayed and projected onto the, you know, onto people. And if you buy into it, you're caught. And so I'm very well aware of anything that tries to create fear for me, you know. And, and, and life's not perfect. Don't get me wrong. I have to still work out things. Um, but I, I'm much more in a place of more awareness around the whole thing. And I'm awake to that whole process now. And I can honestly say that the carnivore diet and the way my brain functions now, so much more clarity and so much more wisdom that I can connect to that part of myself. I'm not caught up in brain fog. I'm not caught up in fear. I'm not caught up in stress based on a poor diet. Um, carbohydrates do that to you. You know, I've, I've tested it out many times, even just with sushi and white rice and my joints, everything starts to ache. Can't sleep that night now. I'm, and it's too late. I, I can't go backwards, to tell you the truth. I really have to force myself and suffer a lot to go back because that's, that's the change. When you transition into a carnival diet, everything starts getting sorted out. You know, my joints and everything, I used to do martial arts and tennis. I don't have any aches and pains in that area at, at all. You know, it's just like, this is pretty amazing, really. So, yeah, the reversal of disease and the reversal of, um degeneration yeah it's very possible I'm, I'm experiencing facets of that already at you know 10 months in mm. um yeah that's awesome yeah. um so if if one of your friends came to you and said look robin I, you're doing so well i i want to get in on this carnivore how do i get started what advice would you give them you know the interesting thing about that and i do work with people that you know, that have, are going through through cancer, in particular prostate cancer and so forth. And, and you know, I say it's worked for me. I really don't try and convince them because I have a couple of friends that are actually been vegan for, for 30 years, lived off grid and everything, and they end up with prostate cancer. And I go, well, you know, in all honesty, what you've been doing to lead you to that point possibly hasn't been working and one of the main things that you've been doing and you know living off grid is probably okay i think there's there's a lot of advantages of not being in 5g and all that sort of stuff and but you know vegetarian yeah, i'm not sure about that one anymore so possibly think about you know changing your diet and, and look at something that possibly could work for you I honestly tell everybody that fasting is the key because that's what is a natural process. And the truth about fasting is you're saving money because you don't eat a meal. And so 21 days of not eating food and just drinking water is pretty, pretty good, um, a pretty good addition to your budget, if that makes sense. Um, you might lose some weight, but that's all good weight that's coming off, you know, and you might, you might kill some cancer cells in your body, which is even an added advantage, you know, and repair other facets that your body wants to do, but you're not giving it a break enough to, to do it. And so, you know, I do find resistance, absolutely. I had one lady that I was talking about urine therapy to, and she said, where do you buy that from? And I said, your own perfect medicine, urine therapy. Oh, oh, I couldn't do that. She said, oh, that's disgusting. I said, okay, well, at least I shared it with you. Well, at least I shared it with you. And it's something that I know for me personally has been an advantage, you know, an honest advantage. <laughs> it's interesting because I saw, I saw, um, Dr. Sean Baker and Dr. Anthony Chafee talking once on a podcast or whatever, and I was talking about a question and answer about do they know anything about urine therapy? And I was like, okay, you know, these, these guys are scientific and medically based and everything's factual and, and, and so forth. And they were like, no, I don't know about this thing called urine therapy. And so I was fortunate enough to have the mindset that I'm you know, alternative or more more associated with traditional medicine, that I could see straight through it. And, and this is what I've done. I've added 
fasting, which they do talk about that. And I've added urine therapy and then I've gone to science and gone quantum healing. I've added all of these in because I only had one purpose back there when I was diagnosed of, well, I'm going to get to zero. I want to get to zero point. And unfortunately, they'll never tell me that I'm net until five years into this whole process of continually repeating scans and saying, well, there's no, there's no sign of this. We'll see you in three months time, you know, cause they can never say, honestly, they, what I've discovered is they can't say you're cancer free because if cancer comes back, then they get sued. And so the way the medical terminology is to say a lot, but nothing at the same time effectively. And which is good. I mean, the first time I've ever discovered that no news is good news is a good thing. <laughs> so I'm happy with the no yeah. news is good news, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, Robin, if people want to reach out to you, um, do you have a website or a YouTube uh, or anything? Yeah. I have um, a website that I, I put together back in 2015. It's called Acupuncture Wisdom Online, all one word, dot com. And so you can find me there. I, I, I'm not, I'm up to date on my blogs when I really get the inspiration to write them, but that's not every week. I'm not, a, I'm not one of those people that actually sits down and does a blog every week. Um, and then you can go to all my contact de details are on that, that website um, as well. So yeah, I pivot off acupuncturewisdomonline.com. I do online consultations as well as in the clinic. Here in Corumban, people obviously local will come into the clinic and do. I'll do treatments with them, but I do online consultations all the time, and and, and you know whether it be Zoom or FaceTime or or just talking to people on the phone, you know. So yeah, I, I, I want to help people because you know that's what it's all about, in my opinion. <laughs> that's what that's what the value of life is to be able to reach out and share and support people that are struggling. And, and if I had a a person like me in the beginning, I think I wouldn't have gone through so much of what I've gone through to get to that point of self-discovery. Not that I wanted to, not that I want to avoid my own self-discovery, but I would have saved a lot of time, energy, and to a great degree money because, you know, it's, it's an expensive gig to be able to, you know, try and get on top of uh, a terminal illness. Absolutely. It's absolutely. And you don't know which way to go in the beginning. So you, you know, you move forward slowly and you do your research. So, um, Robin, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your experience with us. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. You're most welcome, Dave. I really appreciate being having the opportunity to share with people.